I'd like to remind all my Patreons that my Patreon-only documentary on the late Roman Empire has been published, as I promised, on the 30th of this month in the afternoon. The video was a success. Most of the people who have watched it so far have really enjoyed it and I'm really happy for it. Remember that you can have access to these Patreon-only videos with only one dollar. The full video is about 20 minutes long. You know, I've recently made a video where I compared the concept of the historical gladiator versus the historical centurion. Of course, this video was not only requested by you, but mostly by those people who play video games such as Ubisoft games, such as uh, For Honor, where we actually see uh, gladiators and centurions and they fight in the same uh, battle, so they have duels. So, if you're interested in this topic, of course, I will leave a link in the description below as a relevant video to this, uh, video to this topic and discussion. But for today, we are going to talk about legionaries versus centurions again a um, video which was inspired by one of your comments so um, if you had a centurion against a legionary put one against the other in a duel which one would have a higher chance to win over the other because you see when we were talking about gladiators and centurion then we had two different things, very different things, because a gladiator, we said, is an entertainer, is a fighter, a combatant who fights to entertain the people of Rome, whereas in the arena, whereas a centurion is an officer of the, of the army. But in this case, we have an officer of the Roman army, the centurion or centurio, against the legionaries, legionarius. So they are both in the army. And so what are the real differences? Well, often I've seen people writing about this, of course, in the comments, I've seen people talking about this, and often <laughs> the approach is not very historical, I have to say. Other times it is, there are even times where the approach is more historical than mine, because some of you are really knowledgeable. But a lot of people, I'd say the majority of people who talk about these things, and of course always before making a video I have a look at forums to see what people talk about, to see what the mass uh, things, is that they have an approach which is too based on video games, okay? So, um, but they do it talking about historical things. It's like, no, a real centurion would destroy completely a, a legionary, as if a centurion were a sort of um, next level, an advancement from the legionary. It is, but only in, in the sense of um, that a centurion is like an officer, okay? You see, the real centurion, what, how, to become a centurion, what did you have to have more than a legionary? But for example, you had to be able to read and write. And a similar situation if you wanted to become an optio, which is the uh, sort of uh, group leader just immediately under the centurion that was chosen, who was chosen by the centurion. So in order to become an officer of any grade, including low grades, you have to be able to read and write Latin. But if you are fighting in an arena, the fact that you can read Latin and the other guy who is maybe just a legionary but he has got, he is really big, tough and he's strong and he has beaten loads of people and he has had a lot of battle experience, you know, well, yes, he can't read and write. He's still going to take the said centurion and wipe the floor with him regardless of the fact he can't speak, he can't read and write Latin. So in terms of experience in battle, which is the most important thing here, um, you can have a new re recently a centurion who has recently become, you know, a centurion, so yes, but if you compare him to a legionary, for example, who is just a legionary, he's not an officer, he can't read and write, for example, um, but he has been in the legion forever, he has fought loads of times, he's really strong, he's really good at fighting, you know, in that case, you know, the, the, the centurion is going to lose if they have jewel regardless of the fact that he is his superior but of course you can have on the other hand you can have a legionary who is you know he's quite weak not particularly strong compared to other legionaries and and the centurion instead is someone who is his is really good in battle and we know that there were centurions who were really good in battle in fact this is an answer to someone who was mentioning the fact that a centurion will not be as strong or as fit, should I say, uh, as a legionary because they did less marching. That's true. So there is something we do need to take into consideration when doing this hypothetical battle in our mind today. The fact that centurions, since they were officers, they could ride horses during march. Uh, so of course it, it's nice for them, it's, it, it's a lot easier for them to, because they can do that, so it's a good thing. But of course a legionary who walks 
or from Italy to Germany or walks from Italy to France and back you know quite a few times during his career and of course he will be really fit he will have stronger legs because of constant training because of it now that's true but first stamina is not the only thing you know there are lots of other things technique your ability uh, your skill with the weapon and, and sword how good you are just because of the way you are as well your genes your strength your muscle strength your speed uh, how precise you are how fearless you are there are a lot of things that you we need to put into consideration that are variables and they don't really depend on whether you're a centurion or whether you're a legionary which would definitely give the edge to one or the other combatant it's the combatant not the role but of course if you have to equal uh, to complete equals then one is a legionary one is a centurion uh, and but they are absolutely the same in every other aspect then yes the extra stamina might help but that is a very unlikely situation isn't it so what about gear equipment wouldn't a centurion have access to better equipment yes in fact some centurions became quite rich particularly if you're talking about the primus pilus the head centurion those were really rich and some uh, could obviously afford the best uh, equipment ever but it's not like in the middle ages in roman times um, it, the entire army had good equipment okay and yes of course the general will have the very finest that you can find absolutely and probably something no legionary could ever afford but if you look at officers even the rich ones you know they yes they could get for example oh look at that new Lorica Hamata that that legionary has got himself uh, recently I really like that I think I'm gonna get that one instead of the old Lorica Hamata that I have now which is also uh, you know it's, it's it's getting it's getting old a few rings it would have it lost a few rings it still needed to be repaired and perhaps now this new blacksmith he's a lot better than the one who got mine so yes definitely so of course that is a possibility in fact we know reading the records that sometimes legionaries would sell their, their armor um, secondhand it's something that they did when they wanted to change or maybe when they finished service and you know of course these things would happen and or maybe a new helmet was out and he's like oh I like that helmet it's more comfortable let me try on oh that's very nice I'll, I think I'll get one so yes in a way a centurion might have better gear but on the other hand all gear is functional uh, you don't have cheap stuff you, there isn't that huge difference between a uh, for example a poor man at arm some men at arm some men at arm said like armor in the middle ages i'm saying that was as good as that of the knights just on underline but let's say you have a poor man at arm and his armor maybe he's even got cheap off the shelf stuff and then of course compared to the amazing exquisite uh, full plate uh, harness of a of a noble man uh, a noble knight of course the difference will be huge but between a centurion and a legionary not that much so to wrap it up although it's a very interesting thing and it's really nice to imagine like wow let's have a centurion against a legionary who would win uh, it's the real question is the who who are these people not their role in the army all right, well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. But before leaving you, I've got a question for you. If you were to do historical reenactment, would you choose to reenact a centurion or would you choose to reenact a legionary? Which one of the two is the most interesting for you and the one you like to reenact? As far as I'm concerned, maybe I'm going against public concept, the public idea, but I personally prefer reenacting a legionary. In fact, every single time I do reenactment, you will have noticed also on my channel that I always play the part of a legionary, never a centurion. That's because I like feeling what it means to be in the army as the man, the normal man, the standard soldier, the one who was there, not, not, not the officers, not the ones giving commands, but the ones receiving commands and, and executing them, the life of the legionary. I have made a video a few months ago called The March, the uh, human condition of the legionary. If you're interested, I strongly suggest you to watch that video. You will find a link in the description below. And as always, I wish to thank you for your time. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.